everyone, and welcome to Allen East High School, where tonight the homestanding Mustangs welcome in the Lipsig Vikings. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook, alongside Scott Nurse and our entire WSN crew. And Scott, we take a look tonight at the Allen East Mustangs. What a special season they've had. They win tonight. They get a share of the Northwest Conference. Yeah, absolutely. And they've been playing really well, too. I look forward to them to having a good game tonight. And the Lipsig Vikings going to be a tall test ahead of them. They're starting a backup quarterback tonight. Well, they, they, they're going to miss a lot of that offense, both passing game and running game. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Let's take a look at the keys tonight for both teams. Okay, I got three keys. Number one, stay balanced, first down. The key to staying balanced is to have success on first down. Both teams are very balanced with run and pass yardage. Lipsick averages 389 total yards a game and Allen East 336. First down success allows the teams to stay balanced and not become one-dimensional. Down in distance and staying ahead of the chains is a key tonight. Number two, defensive line, stop the run. Lipsick has Hayden Heigl, who comes into the game with 1,063 yards and 15 touchdowns. He averages 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Alan East has Jack Hole and Jacob Hershberger, who have combined for 1,350 yards and 20 touchdowns. These are at the top of the NWC. The defensive line has to step up and stuff the run. The team that can do that, I believe, gets a win. And then third, sense of urgency. Allen East is in the playoffs and likely to host their first two games. Lipsick needs a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. They have to bring it tonight if they want to get in. They must play with extreme focus and make every play count. Allen East has to guard against complacency. Take care of business. If they do, they clinch a share of the NWG, NWC championship as well. It's Allen East and Lipsick with the NWC title on the line for the Mustangs right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Allen East High School. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse here at Allen East High School tonight. Scott, I said earlier in the pregame that the, the NWC was on the line, and it's sort of not, not true. Uh, Allen East, even if they did not win the game, they still have a chance to win a share of the Northwest Conference title. But if they win tonight, they've guaranteed themselves. Right, but Columbus Grove sits at 6-2. and two. Right. They've got a one-game uh, lead over them right now. So... So, you know, that, that's their goal is they want to clinch now. They don't want to wait and have to share it and that sort of thing. They want to, you know, they want to go out and win it outright. Allen East comes in tonight 7-1, uh, and 5-0 and oh in the Northwest Conference, led by head coach Joel Billings. The Olympics of Viking come in head, led by Joe Kirkendall at 3-5 three and 2-3 and two and three in the Northwest Conference. And we said earlier, Scott, uh, Lipsick starting a, a new quarterback, a young man who's had three pass attempts on the year. So they've got a big task ahead of them. Yeah, they do. Um, the officials tonight, you can see there is uh, Douglas Wise, Zach Duncan, Mike Metcalf, William Brown, Brad Zirkel, and Jason Miller. The referee tonight is Doug Wise. And we already had a visit from the officials. Came up. Yeah, the he came up to the press box and uh, offered up, uh, you know, some discussion sage, prior, sage advice, yes. right before the game. And uh, I think he was up here to sample the food. I think he was too. Fantastic food. Oh up here my tonight. goodness, we have been treated so good tonight by these folks here at Allen East. Always are here. So Lipsick will kick off. Allen East will accept that first kick and a little squibbler down the middle. It's caught up by the up man. And that'll go down about the 36-yard line. So Allen East is going to start out in great field position. So the Mustangs come out, Scott. They are led by maybe, maybe possibly, if the voting was today, the NWC Player of the Year in Jacob Hershberger. The young man is 67 of 119, 10 touchdowns, four interceptions. He is a dynamic quarterback. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. Um, you know, it's interesting. I was going through the NWC stats and, and looking at each category, yes. offense yeah. and defense, and he's on every list. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's yeah. it's a, it, it's incredible. He's uh, And he's one of the guys we talked about as yes. key to the game. He is. So the Mustangs come out. Hershberger's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Jack Hole, who goes off the left side. He's going to get about five yards, and that is the primary ball care for the Allen East Mustangs. You're going to see him all night rushing the ball. Yeah, and he comes into the game with uh, 692 yards, 11 touchdowns. Touchdowns averages 5.2 a carry. That's a pretty, uh, you know, healthy average coming into the, tonight's game. Yeah, and you take a look at both of the running backs for these two squads tonight. And you've got Hayden Heigl on the other side who leads the NWC in rushing. Here comes Hershberger as he's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to roll off to the left side. He's going to find his man down by the 50. He's got the ball at the 40. He's going to be taken down by the 35. And a nice reception there. Man, stepped out of bounds. 
time or two there, but that was number eight, Joseph Hole, the brother of Jack Hole. So. Yeah, and he comes in uh, this year with 18 receptions, almost 200 yards, two touchdowns, averages 11 yards per reception. Got a lot more on that one. Let's take a look at the screen. And this is the thing that makes Mr. Hershberger so effective is his ability to extend plays, and he is so dangerous on third down when, it, when they need that first down. Well, you know, I saw a lot of these guys in the summer in, in some of the basketball scrimmages and that because they play both sports, and they're just so athletic. Hershberger throws the ball downfield and almost a reception as he targeted number four for the Mustangs. That's Keaton Lehman, and that is his number one target on the year. Keaton Lehman comes in at 404 yards, 28 catches, and two touchdowns. But he's got weapons everywhere, Scott. Yeah, no question about it. And he's uh, the fifth leading receiver in the Northwest Conference. Averages almost 51 yards a game in receiving. My goodness. So he has got all kinds of weapons. Here comes Hershberger in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Hole. Hole's going to go up the middle. He breaks a couple of tackles, and he gets about five or six yards. And he is an absolute bowling ball. Scott, I had him last week at Bluffton, and he dominated the line of scrimmage. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, aptly named, right? Yes, Hole. absolutely. He creates his own he Hole. He sure does. I mean, if there's not one there, he's going to create one, as you see. And he always falls forward. He does. And what we talked about him last week, Scott, is he just gets stronger as the game goes on. And that offensive line looks great because he's hitting so hard. So here's Hershberger again. He throws to the right side. Target was for Jack Hole, and he overshoots him, and that's going to bring up third down. Well, you know, you talk about those guys getting stronger, and I think that's honestly, I think that's a testimony to Coach Billings, you know, and their summer conditioning and their strength programs and that to prepare these guys to be able to not only last during the game, but continue oh, to get stronger and maintain that that edge. So Alan East is going to go for it. I, I mispronounced. I said it was third down. It is fourth down fourth and three from the 30-yard line. So they're going to go kind of a no-man's land here, Scott. Not going to punt it, not going to try the field goal. So they're going to go for it on fourth and three. Yeah. Here's Hershberg. He hands the ball to Hole, and he is hit, and he did not get it. And a terrific job by the Lipsick defensive front. Well, there was absolutely nothing there. And you saw Esteban Carrillo, the six-foot junior, comes in and makes a great play at the line of scrimmage. So... Mustangs get stopped on their first possession, and here come the Lipsick Vikings. Yeah, and Carrillo's another kid who, uh, you know, as we look down through the Northwest Conference and the stat leaders, he's a, another one of those players that seems to be in just about every category. And we talked about Quinn Schroeder, Schroeder the, the starting quarterback for the Vikings. 1,348 yards and 11 touchdowns, Scott, and he is not playing tonight. He is out for the season, so a huge loss for the Vikings. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge, no question about it, but I think uh, – you know, the, the, the good part is is, is Coach Kirkendall, he, he's, he's been around for a coach. while. Yeah, he's fantastic. a great coach. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that he has, you know, the, the backups well prepared. Well, here's what he does have. He's got the number one running back in yards in the Northwest Conference in Hayden Heigl, 162 carries and 1,060 yards already on the season and four touchdowns. So they're going to rely heavily on his legs tonight. Yeah, he averages 133 Ooh. yards per game. That's, 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 that's moving. That's big time. <laughs> that is. Here's Lommers as he throws across, and he's got a man out in the middle. Gain of about seven yards, and that's going to be a Viking first down. So Tyler Lommers comes in, three of seven on the year for 26 yards. So we'll see how he does tonight. And his first pass right there looks pretty good. Yeah, and that's Trent Seifker. He comes into the game 288 yards, two touchdowns, averages 16 yards a catch. They got about 11 or 12 there for a first down. So got to feel good about that. You know, if you're a quarterback stepping in, your first pass is completed for a first down. So Tyler Lommers is in the gun. He's got his man Heigl in the middle. He brings the ball up the middle. And, boy, he gets about seven yards, Scott. He looked really good on that run. Well, he runs low. He runs strong. He, obviously, he spent a lot of time at the squat rack because he's just so strong from the waist down. You can see right here, lowers his shoulder and just drives people and continues to move his feet and then falls forward. And we talked a lot about what, what Alan East has on the line tonight, but Lipsick with an out, out, outside. It's out there, but there's still an outside shot at a playoff berth with the 16-team format. Yeah, if they can win both games tonight and next week, yes. they have a really good chance of getting in the playoffs. So here comes Heigl again as he goes off the left side. Scott, he's getting six, seven, eight yards of carry, and he looks really effective right now. And that offensive line for the Lipsick Vikings is really doing a job up front. Yeah, that's uh, and that's just his average, you know. Yeah, I mean, right. <laughs> he averages that. He almost lost the ball there. But, you know, that's that's why I thought that a key to tonight's game, you talked about Hole and yes. Hershberger, and you talked about Heigl, the three H's tonight. <laughs> that's right. And, uh, you know, the defensive line on both sides of the football have their work cut out. 
So here's Lommers in the gun. He's got Heigl behind him. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's going to give it to the up man up front. And the Alanese defense sniffs that one out for got a gain of a yard. Today's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance. We provide you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible prices. And nobody does replays better than our team, Scott. We do a fantastic job of showing you all those highlights. Yeah, they really do. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really proud of the product that, you know, our oh, camera absolutely. crew is able to yep. capture and, and bring to yeah, screen. You ever notice that when we're up here, all the media guys get around us and we got the screen here? Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. want to see those replays and those close plays. I thought it was just me. Well, it, it is. You know. Sometimes it is. <laughs> yeah. Here's Lommers. He's going to throw to the right. He's got his man out there. There's a reception. He's going to take it up for another first down, and that's number six, Estevan Carrillo, who we've already spoke about on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and he comes in with 451 yards, 32 catches in eight games, four touchdowns, averages 14.1 .1 per catch. And I really like this play call. You get your athlete, your receiver out there in space along the edge, let him do some work, see what he can find. He picks up. Well, last week this Lipsick Viking team lost to Jefferson 26-6, but it looks like right now they've really found those offensive woes and corrected all that. Well, and I think uh, that was just a hard count there. So the Lipsick kids are fired up right now, and you look across the field, and not a lot of folks venture to Allen East for the game, and you come over to the home side, and it is just a sea of blue. And uh, they, they pack the stands every Friday night here. Yeah, well, no question about it. And, and you know there's enthusiasm in the community sure, whenever absolutely. your team yeah. is doing well. And, and, of course, Allen East doing very well this year. So, um, you know, they have a long, rich tradition of, they do. of good football here. And they've got a beautiful facility with this new turf, and uh, everything's just really nice. And the wind's died down. <laughs> That's right. Here comes <laughs> Hayden Heigo again. He's going to pick up another five yards on another tough run, and that's going to bring up second and five from about the 20-yard line. You know, Danny, I'd like to go back to that previous yes. play. I thought that was nice job by the, the, the new quarterback yes, Tyler coming Holmes. in with a hard count, was able to draw the defense off sides, pick up that easy first down through penalty. And uh, that's something that more of a veteran move that you would see. Well, well you know that the Allen East defensive line prepared all week for Hayden Heigl. So, so they're going to be on their toes, and that's a great – you're absolutely right. That is a veteran move by the young quarterback. So here come Lommers in the gun. He's got Hayden Heigl behind him. He's got two to the left. He's got one in the slot. He's going to hand off to – Number six, and that is Carrillo, and he's going to get a gain of about two yards. That's going to bring up a third and about two. Yeah, and you can probably guess who's going to get this third and two carry. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I I'm going to say Hayden Heigl. I'm just going to throw it out there. Yeah. And if it's right, the people at home can be like, wow, Holbrook, he knows what he's talking about. So third and one from the 20-yard line. 6.21 to go. First quarter moving along very swiftly. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Allen East High School. Lommers is in the gun. He's got Carrillo to his left and Hayden Heigl. Heigl's going to get the ball up front, and he's going to be met by the Mustang defensive line. That is going to be a, a close call there. We'll have to see if they're going to measure that or if he did get the first down. Yeah, it's close. It looks like where the official has marked it, it's going to be really close. Yeah, and they've put, they put fourth down on the stick, Scott. So uh, apparently, yeah, you're right. And we look at the replay. He did not make it. So the first big decision of the game for the Lipsic Vikings, and i got to believe at uh, 3 and 5 and on Allen East 19-yard line, they're going to go for it. Well, we saw Lipsic get the stop against uh, Hole when uh, Allen East had the ball. Now let's see if Allen East can return the favor. So here comes Lommers. He's got Carrillo to his left, and he's got Heigl to the backside. He's got one to the left and one to the right. He's in the gun. He'll take the snap, hand to Heigl. Heigl goes up the middle, and I believe he may have got that with a little bit of effort there. And yeah, I think uh, where yep, they marked it, they're going to move the chains. And, uh, you know, the interesting part about that is if you watch him, he when he takes the handoff and hits the hole, he's like a sprinter. I was going to say he's, he hits at full force. He's at full speed, his second or third step, and it's really uh, I I think that's the key to his success is that he's he he's he's at full speed when he hits the line of scrimmage. So Lipsick is in the red zone at the 18-yard line, first and 10, 4:59 to go. Lommers is in the gun. He's going to keep it himself, and they're going to stop play right there. Yeah, I, th I think we're going to have movement on the offensive yeah, line. You've got to believe that will be a false start on the Lipsic Vikings. And it was. That will back them up. Lipsic comes in, Scott, averaging offensively 27.2 a game. 
defensively they give up 22.6 a game. Last week they lost. They're on a three-game losing streak. But, the, but you take a look at those three teams, Grove 23 to nothing, Bluffton 34-14, and Jefferson 26-6. And you can say, well, Jefferson's you know not a, a top-tier team, but they've won three of their last four games. Yeah, they have. Uh, the, and that's what the Northwest Conference brings. There's a lot of times there's parity. There's, there's teams that sort of reach their peak later in the season. Absolutely. And, and, and those that fall off. And, of course, you know, you talked about the quarterback, Schrader. He, he played the last two weeks yes, yes. on a stress fracture, didn't know he had a broken leg, <laughs> couldn't run, uh, couldn't really move, and was still able to perform. And here's Hayden Heigl again as he is just taking a lot, bending backwards. And that young man just kept moving forward. Yeah, that ball was a little loose in there. That's you twice saw we've some seen Alan East yeah. uh, arms and fingers and hands in there trying to pull it out. <laughs> That's twice we've seen that from Heigl. So. Here comes Lommers as he's got two receivers to his left, one to the right. This is Heigl up the middle again. And that'll bring up a third down. It'll be third and about five or six from the 15-yard line. So they keep the ball on the ground. 3.45 to go, and the clock continues to run. And, and look, if, you, if you're Lipsick, you want to you go on them 12, 13-play drives. Keep that Allen East offense off the field. Absolutely. Man, I like how Allen East, though, is swarming to the football. They've got, you know, yes. four, five, six blue jerseys in on the tackles, every tackle. And and honestly, you need more than one oh, to bring you. Heigl down. Absolutely. So here's Lommers. He's going to throw across the middle. He's got his man, and it's a touchdown, Lipsig. He knocks a strike to number 19, Trent Seifker. The 5'11 junior hauls it in, and he gives the Vikings the 6-0 lead. Yeah, and that's uh, Seifker's third touchdown on the year. Just a nice little slant. I like how Lommers looked away and then came back to his receiver on the inside play. Nice throw, great job. And a fantastic first drive for the Lipsig Vikings as they get six on the board. Tyler Lommers to Trent Skeefker on a 12-yard pass play. He takes it in, and he gives the Lipsig Vikings the 6-0 lead. Well, and one of the keys Kirkendall said told us was he wanted to protect the new they quarterback. Right, right. And, and honestly, he, he's kind of opened it up a little bit here. We've had two passes on this drive. And, and there is a two-point conversion. They go again to Esteban Carrillo. And just like that, Scott, it is eight to nothing. Well, and they're going to be going for two on any scores Absolutely. tonight because their kicker was Schrader, yep, and he's yep. out. And so uh, they told us before the game they'll go for two on every score. And pretty much the same kind of pattern that he ran is he ran in front of that DB, took him to the right, and then brought him back. Eight to nothing here at Allen East High School. When we come back, we'll have more high school football on WOSC. Welcome back to Allen East High School. Today's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance. We provide you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. So the Lipsic Vikings take an eight to nothing lead here in Allen East, stunning this crowd with 317 to go. And Scott, that was a methodical drive, running, passing, everything they needed to do, and they put it in the end zone. Yeah, nice balance of offense there. And Ty Lammers just surpassed <laughs> in this game already his entire season. Yeah, total. you're right. So, you're absolutely right. And he looked uh, comfortable. Looked he, really comfortable. He looked comfortable and and, and that's a result, uh, as I said before, of good coaching, good preparation, good confidence. Yes. You know, and, and, and that's something that's important as a new quarterback is the coach is showing some confidence in you and, and allowing you to take those opportunities to make plays, and Lammers has. Absolutely. So Lipsick fired up right now. They will kick the ball deep to Allen East, and receiving the ball back for Allen East is number eight, and that's Joseph Hole, and the ball goes out of bounds. And so there's a flag on that play. Season 18 of Sports Report is underway. More highlights, scores, and stories that matter to you only on the Sports Report. Friday at 10 on TV44. You and I got to be part of the Sports Report a couple weeks ago. We did. Highlight of our lives. Yeah, we did, and we were well behaved, I must say. <laughs> we were uh, told. We were told. Yes. Patrick said, don't screw this up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, Patrick is such a veteran. He's been doing he that for quite a while, does a great job. But, and he uh, knew the sophomores he brought on board. Right, yeah, that's yeah. right. He knew yeah. what he's dealing with. <laughs> But fortunately, they had the uh, button where if we said anything stupid, they, right? Yeah. Well, they brought Shine in to uh, lend some credibility. Well, to the Evan Skilleter too. Yeah. So well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, gussy it up a little. Well, bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Evan, Evan's gonna be on my radio show tomorrow. Uh. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so here come the Mustangs down 8 nothing with 3.17 to go. See if Jacob Hirschberger can get the Mustangs on the board. He's got Hole in the backfield. He's got one in motion. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to go up the middle, and this is what he does best as he gets to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40. There goes Hershberger. He's going to go down. He's going to take it in for a Mustang touchdown. And just like that, Scott Nurse, the Mustangs are right back in this one. Well, that's his 10th touchdown on the year. It came in with 660 yards, and he just put about, uh, what, 80? <laughs> yeah. 80 on that one, and... Uh, you know, just a, a nice hole does a good job of a little athletic move and a cut to the outside right here. You'll see him put, plant that right foot, get a little block, and then it's a race. And yeah. he's got speed. He races everybody in the end zone. Just a great job there. We'll, so, we'll, we'll go with 65 yards. He was at the 35. Yeah, you're right. I, I forgot that it went out of bounds. But, That's yeah, right. just a great, uh, a great answer, yeah, right, so by Alan That East. is fantastic. So there's the extra point to make it 8-7 to seven with 3.05 to go. You're watching high school football right here. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Well, there you go, Scott. 7-1, and 5-0 in the Northwest Conference. They didn't get there because they just hung around and did the little things. They respond when they have to. Yeah, they absolutely responded. The interesting part to me, though, is with Lipsick only being able to go for two, they're up one still. Right, right. And that's going to create kind of this scoring, uh, you know, point. the number yeah, yeah, yeah. difference. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see where that – you know, where that sure. equalizes. Well, Alan East comes in offensively, averaging 37.2 a game, and defensively they only give up 14 a game. So uh, defense is going to have to step it up because uh, Lipsick really took it to him that first drive. Yeah, very different drives for sure. One play versus uh, a long, sustained drive. So there's a nice long kick. will be fielded by the deep man as he brings it up to about the 17-yard line. That's number five for the Vikings, Caleb Ellerbrock, the 5'8 senior. He's taken down by a host of Mustangs. Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. We have the best app. I, ch I check the WSN app 24 times, all the time. Yeah, I do all too. The time. I yeah. use it all the time. Yep. And what's great is like Friday nights, you know, you get it, it's updated constantly. <laughs> it's, it's, they do a great job. Everybody up here it. is always checking it yep. at halftime. It's a, it's a really good. Absolutely. Group. So here come the Vikings. Tyler Lammers is in the gun. He's got Hayden Heigl behind him. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll to the right. He's going to throw about 10 yards down the sideline. He's got his man out there. That's number 19, Trent Seifker. So there's Seifker again with a nice connection, and that's another Viking first down. And you, you said it earlier, Scott. He's getting no pressure. That offensive line is doing a fantastic job, and they're rolling him out to keep that play extended. Well, and I like that, too, when you roll him towards the receiver because it shortens the throw. It makes a higher degree of success. You know, they're not throwing completely across the field. He's running to the receiver. So here comes Lommers in the gun. He is showing you why he is in that position. He's going to keep it. He's going to hand the ball to Hayden Heigl. Hayden Heigl breaks up the middle, and that's going to be a gain of about three yards. That'll bring up second and seven from the twenty or from the thirty-three yard line. Excuse me. You take a look at Allen East schedule, and they have only one stumbling block, and they lost to a really good Elmwood team this year at fifty-three to twenty-one. In the last two weeks, they've defeated Bluffton thirty to fourteen, and uh, defeated Jefferson at sixty-two to six. So they've got some big scores. They scored fifty-eight against Spencerville, twenty-nine against Crestview, sixty-four against Perry. So so they're capable of putting up some big numbers. There's Lommers again. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to go to the left side. He's going to pick up about five yards, and that's going to bring up third and short. You know, Lommers is only a sophomore. That's the uh, you know that's a great part about it is that if you're going to have to step in with a quarterback, uh, oh, yeah. it's nice to have to know that he's going to be around for a couple more years. So. Yeah, and it's and it's a sad thing that Quinn Schrader went down, but oh, they, they've got a solid performance here from Tyler Lommers so far. So good for them. And like you said earlier. Their coach is fantastic. He does a terrific job. And, and uh, Joe Kirkendall, I, I got to interview him last year at the Allen East Lipsy game. And just a solid guy. Yeah. So here we go, third and three from the 37-yard line. Lommers is in the gun. He's got Hayden Heigl to his left. He's going to get the ball to Heigl. Heigl goes up the middle, and he's going to come awful close to a first down. And I believe he just stretched over enough to get the first down. 
You're right, Scott. He runs so hard. He runs hard. Allen East had uh, nine guys in the box on that play. As you see, they're basically in cover zero with two, yes. two outside uh, defenders on the receivers manned up, and everyone else is in the box, and, and still he's able to move the chains. And you saw Keaton Lehman meet him at the line this, or the, at the about the five yard mark, and he just pushed him back to get the first down. So yeah. some strong running there by Hayden Heigl, the leading ball carry in the NWC. Yeah, you don't put up 11, 1,200 yards in a season <laughs> in, in, without yeah. being. Well, in eight games so yeah. far. <laughs> yeah, so here comes uh, Tyler Lommers in the gun. He'll take the snap. He's going to throw to the left. He's got Seifker out there, and they've got another completion. Gain of about two yards. So he's getting the time. He's finding the receivers. The receivers are running crisp routes and they're moving the ball methodically. Nothing big, nothing that's going to hurt him, and he's put a lot of confidence in this young sophomore. Yeah, number 13, Bryce Avery for Allen East got a hand on that football. Just, just a, nine, yeah. yeah, just a, it, it, uh, and, and still Seifert's able to concentrate and make the catch. Well, look, you want to talk about an opportunistic defense. This Allen East defense has 22 tur takeaways this year. 22, yeah, Scott. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, that is just amazing, and, and they're very athletic. And that's the secret sauce. Absolutely, that, that right. makes it work for them. Yeah. They they take the football away and then capitalize on it. Yeah. So there's uh, Hayden Heigl again as he picks up another Viking first down. So the secret right now for Lipsick is they're going to keep it on the ground when they have to and only throw in uh, those certain situations, and the recipe's working right now. Well, you see he runs low, and, and really he wasn't touched until about five yards in. Um, offensive line's doing a pretty good job for him. And that's going to do it for the first quarter here at Allen East High School. After one quarter, the Lipstick Vikings have an 8-7 to seven lead. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.tv slash John Reed. So. And, Danny, the good part about that is, too, that's not only for head coaches, that's for assistant coaches right, right. or any, anybody that is coaching in the organization. You, so. you know, Scott, this we are, we are so blessed in this area to have so many good really good football coaches and, and we see it every week and not just football basketball coaches all over the area yeah we really do we are fortunate yeah. there's another flag and that's probably going to be a false start yeah it looked like the left side for Lipsick moved a little early and that's exactly what it is so that's the second false start of the night for the vikings yeah, I, I, I was at a school uh, early this year, and they, they did a little presentation at halftime to their 7th and 8th grade, their junior high coaches. And the two coaches that they presented to had been coaching there for 40 years and, yeah. and I think 42 or 43 junior years. Junior high I coaches. Mean, yeah, and, and, I mean, that kind of commitment and longevity is what builds a program. Absolutely. So here come the Vikings. This is Heigl again. Nothing. Just swarmed over by the defensive line from Allen East, and that's their best play to date. And that was number six, Estevan Carrillo. So nobody's sleeping on that play. And the Allen East defense led by number one, Keaton Miller, yeah, stops number, that drive. Yeah, number 52, Gage Wireman was in there too, a 5'5", 195-pound outside linebacker, senior. So that will bring up. <clears throat> second and 16 from the 44-yard line. Had to check our board there. We had the wrong uh, numbers on the board there, but they got that corrected. Here's Lommers thrown across the middle. He's got a man wide. Oh, my goodness, are you kidding me? Number three, Jacob Hershberger just laid the wood to number 20, Jacob Shekeloff. And, wow, you want to talk about a hit. Watch this, Scott. Yeah, he was there in cover three, so Hershberger's just playing center field back there and times it up just right, makes the hit, bang. And nothing Not, dirty about that. That is a clean football play. That, and you're exactly right. The timing is amazing. Right. And he jumped up and gave the, uh, you know, the safe signal. <laughs> yes, I saw you know, that. we see that a lot on TV these days. <laughs> so here we go. Third and 16. Here's Lommers. He's going to throw to the left side. And he's got a man out there. And he overshoots number three on the play. Then he was directed toward Jace Breck, the 6'1 sophomore. He just goes a little bit high. That'll bring up fourth down. That'll bring up the punt team for Lipsig. So it looks like right now they've settled down a little bit on the Allen East defensive side and kind of stopped the drive of the Lipstick Vikings. Well, a lot of times, you know, you come into a game and, and you're expecting certain things and, and, and they're not quite what they, what they are or what you thought they were. Sure. So it takes a little adjustment. 
And, and, and consequently, on the other side, most of the offense, the first 10, 12 plays are scripted. So, right. so you run those a lot during the week. Right. And you, ha you have those in your head and – and you're kind of prepared for a very short so, punt. Yeah, very short punt, which is going to go back the other way, and it's going to set Allen East up at the 50-yard line. You know, I played some golf today, and I tried to do that several <laughs> times with my wedge to, to get that draw to come back like that, um, and, and it never happened. But I, it, it does uh, on this punt, you know, it, it, a little bit of a short punt, and then to compound matters, it hits and, and takes a, a very fortuitous well, look, Scott, for all of us who are working today, thank you for playing around the <laughs> golf for us. We appreciate it. Well, that. <laughs> it was necessary. The weather was very cooperative. <laughs> so. It was, it was necessary. It was necessary. I never heard that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. First and 10 from the 50. Allen East down 8 to 7, 11 02 to go. Danny Holbrook, Scott, Nurse here. Uh, talking PGA Tour here with Scott <laughs> Nurse. <laughs> not, not, not quite. <laughs> here comes Jacob Hershberger and the Mustangs. He's got hole to his right. He's going to hand off the hole up the middle, and he is taken down. Oh, he was taken down, and he kept his legs moving as he picks up a nice three, four-yard gain. And uh, number 48 for the Stangs, that is Jack Hole. Yeah, and it looks like he, he slaps the ground here once he is tackled because I think he felt like he could get a little more and was going to pull away and just doesn't quite get there. So here comes Hershberger in the gun. He's going to keep it himself as he rolls to the left side. He's following Jack Holt through the line. And he's going to pick up close to a first down as he's thrown out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. And they are going to mark that a first down. Yeah, Hershberger called that himself just then. He, he gave the point. But, well, I, you know, he runs so strong, and you see him explode sort of on contact there and gets another three or four yards after the contact. So here comes Hershberger in the gun. He's got hold to his right. He's going to hand the ball off to Hole as he goes up the middle. Hard running, and he's going to pick up another first down as he gets about 14 yards on the carry and a fantastic run by number 48, Jack Hole. Well, again, that's just – that's just keeping your legs moving, keeping them churning, pushing the ball forward. Great job running the football Watch here by Hull. And it, it, it never, never we, do we see this young man go outside of the tackles. He runs straight through the hole, and if there's not a hole there, he finds one. Yeah, you're right. Here he goes again as he goes right up the middle. As he gets those tough yards, a gain of four to five yards. Going to bring it second and five or six from the 20-yard line. You know, the thing, if there's younger kids out here watching this game, that the, the interesting part, and you want to run the football, both of these running backs are excellent, Hole and Heigl. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and both of them stay very low to the ground. They really uh, – you, you don't get a lot. You get their thighs, and that's about it, and they keep them moving. Are you kidding me? Did you see the moves he just put on the Leipzig defense? And he takes it into the end zone. Jacob Hershberger just showed you why he may be the player of the year in the Northwest Conference. Yeah, and that's 11th touchdown already for him running the football. And, and Watch just, this. Th this is amazing, Scott. Yeah. Just Unbelievable. A, he puts his right foot in and just leaves Leipzig defender standing and and, and basically goes into the end zone untouched. That was maybe one of the best quarterback runs we've seen all year from Jacob Hershberger. So here comes the extra point attempt as the Mustangs will try to go up 14 to eight, and they do that exactly. So with 9.25 to go from Allen East High School, the Mustangs have taken a 14 to eight lead right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsy for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale's Concrete is our scoreboard sponsor. So 5.28 to go. Lipsy takes the timeout, Scott. What are, they, what are that third and eight? I, I realize it's a long third down. What, are the, what do you think the coaches are telling these kids right now? Well, I think it's a key play here. Uh, you're, yes. you're in Allen East territory. If you can convert the first down here, it, it puts you in really good position to maybe get a score. And so it, it's kind of an important play in the game. So Lommer's going to keep it himself, and he's got a lead block, and he's going to pick up the first down and more as he takes it down to the red zone, and he's at about the 19. And was that a flag, or did they just throw a spot in, or they lose the ball? We'll see what happens here. And a really nice call by the Vikings as Tyler Lommer's followed his lead blocker right up the left side and just a terrific gain. 
Yeah, it looked like Allen East defenders were swatting at the football. It might have come loose there. It looks to be like uh, Lipsick has recovered because they haven't indicated otherwise. Well, here's Lommers. He goes to the left side. And he gets tripped up a little bit there, and you're right. They did swat down at the ball, and he did lose the ball. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And how he kept uh, the Lipsick got that back was – we can't see in the scrum, but a terrific job by them to get the ball back. Yeah, it looked like number three, Jace Breck, fell on the football. So 5.15 to go here, and Lipsick threatens to score again. So a good conversion on that third down. So the timeout, Absolutely. the timeout was uh, very, very uh, timely. A timely, you know, a timely timeout. Well, he followed Carrillo on the left side, and here comes Jimenez. He carries the ball up the middle, goes off the right side a little bit, and he gets a gain of about two yards. So they'll keep that clock running. And that offensive line continues to push around that defensive line in blue. So a great job of responding after being stopped on two previous possessions. Lipsick's put together a nice drive here, although being helped by the pass interference play. Yeah, and Lipsick, um, you know, that that's the way they want to run this game tonight. They want long, sustained drives, Absolutely. keep it on the ground, power football into the end zone with a few passes mixed in, so kind of the opposite of the uh, quick strike yeah. that Allen East brings. There's Lommers. He's going to hand the ball up to Menez. It goes off the right side. Picks up maybe a yard or two. They'll continue pounding that right side as they've found some success on that. Going to keep the clock running at 4.15 to go. Lipsy get three and five and two and three in the Northwest Conference. So if they get a win here tonight, they could even up the NWC record and keep those playoff hopes alive. And I saw last week where if St. Henry would have won last week and finished at 2-8, and eight, they could have got in the playoffs just because of the strength of the schedule. So it differs from, uh, from, from conference to conference. So here comes Lommers. He's going to hand the ball off to Jimenez. He's taken down really quick right there. And I don't wait. I'm sorry. That was Mason Raider. I said Jimenez. That Mason Raider, the 5'8 junior running back, takes the ball up the Mason middle. Takes the for the Vikings. And now we're looking at fourth and one from the nine yard line. Yeah, and I don't have any information on Mason Raider. I, I don't have so anything he's, on him. Uh, yeah. You know, they they've gone down uh, a couple a couple people in the rotation because of Heigl being out. All right. Well, it's uh, running back by committee. You're that's absolutely right. And they it, it seems to be working so far. Fourth and about two. From the nine yard line, 316 to go. There comes Lommers in the gun. I would expect him maybe to keep it himself. He had such great luck the last time. Yeah, and he's going to take yeah, a timeout. going to take a timeout and talk about it here. So with 306 to go, the Lipstick Vikings will take a timeout. You're watching high school football right here. Today's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance. We provide you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. Eastside Insurance is our instant replay sponsor. So 3.06 to go here from Allen East High School. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse, watching the Lipsick Vikings try to even up the score here. And as you said earlier, if they put it in the end zone, they will go for two as their kicker is uh, on the, uh, on the I IR, as we say. And uh, we take a look here. Hay Hayden Heigl has not yet come back into the game. And so uh, they've got number 21, Mason Raider, in the backfield with Lommers on fourth and one. Lommers is going to throw the end zone. He's got a man out there. And it looks like that ball bounces off, and that's going to be a turnover on down. So kind of surprised, Scott, that they threw the ball there. Well, uh, you know, with your with your number one running back out, sure. they go to uh, – they go to that, that play that's worked a couple times yeah, earlier tonight, yeah. that little slant from the inside, and, and Trey Hensley from Allen East, number 18, a 5'10", 160-pound junior, does a nice job of reading that, reaching in with his left arm, knocking it away. He did a fantastic job. That's a great call, Scott. He got in a really good position. He was behind the receiver, but got his arm around to the front and deflected the ball. Yeah, just technically sound. That's exactly how you want to play it. And now Allen East has the football. So Allen East with a quick strike offense has a chance to go up another score here. Jacob Hersberger's in the gun. He's got Jack Hole behind him. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's going to keep it himself. So he goes off tackle, and he's taken down hard, and he comes down on that shoulder, and there's a flat comes in and you just wonder if that's going to be a horse tackle collar oh sorry a horse collar tackle <laughs> I thought you were tricking me there but uh, dyslexia yeah there no it's part. a it, I'm not sure what it was either that or face mask I'm not it's a late flag yeah let's see what they call it let's 
see what they call. They're not. Yeah, they're uh, talking about it a little bit. Again, this is Doug Wise and his crew as the referee. Looks like it's going to go against Allen East. Against Allen East. All yeah, right. I, I thought perhaps there could have been a block in the back there okay. um, by the lineman that Hershberger sure. jumped over. Fair enough. So Not here come sure. the Mustangs from the four-yard line as the clock continues to run. Hershberger's in the gun. He's got Hole beside him. He's going to keep it himself and follow the block of Hole. And he's going to be tripped up by number 77 for Lipsick, and that is Seth Apple, the 6'5", 226-pound senior, does a great job of getting in the backfield. Yeah, and he's every bit of 226. Yes, nice is. job there of, of uh, making the tackle and not allowing Hershberger to get outside of that tackle box. You, you look at this Lipsick roster, Scott. It's littered with 223, 223, 264, 209, 440, 226, 315. They've got some really big kids on that roster. And a lot of sophomores and freshmen right. on the list, too. They're, yeah. young and they're young and they're coming up. Yeah, you know Coach Kirkendall really enjoys that in the weight room when those kids are, uh, you know, vying for playing time. Well, and that's one of the things about, uh, you know, when injuries happen and you don't want them to happen, but you got younger kids forced into action. And there you saw Hershberger as he went down the right side. He had number six, Caleb Hopkins, way behind the secondary, and he just misses the connection. I've had the Mustang several times this year, and Caleb Hopkins is an absolute speedster. He is really good at racing down those sidelines, and unfortunately he got close to the sidelines and just lost the ball. Yeah, that's one uh, you'll think about later. Yeah. You know, you'd like to have caught that. There's Hershberger, he keeps it himself. He's going to try to get on the outside, trying to get away from the defenders. He's smacked down by number 51 for the Vikings. Brody Lommers, the 5'9 freshman, puts a colossal hit on him. Yeah, I think that was, uh, it might have been 55. Oh, was it 55? Isaiah Car Camarino comes into your picture here a little bit late. You are correct, yeah. sir. My vision has gone. I Senior. It was 51, so it's 55. Well, I gave credit to a freshman. He's got, his parents got to be thrilled. Well, yeah, you know, what the heck. The good part is is uh, that's a stop for Lipsick. We're going to take a break here with 151 to go. The Allen East Mustangs lead the Lipsick Vikings 14 to 8. Allen East is in pump formation here. Jacob Hershberger is the number one punter. Another category he leads in Northwest Conference in at 39.3 yards per punt. <laughs> and uh, he does the punting duties there. Are you surprised? <laughs> that young man just got them out of a big hole as they were in the end zone. And now Lipsick will start with 144 to go here uh, past midfield. So great position for the Mustangs. Danny Holbrook, Scott Nurse from Allen East High School. The Mustangs lead 14 to eight with 144 to go in the second quarter. A very quick moving first half here. Uh, both teams have flexed their offensive muscle, uh, running the ball, passing the ball. We've seen a little bit of everything tonight. Well, Lipsick wasn't able to convert that fourth down last series, but they do a great job defensively holding right. Allen East and now have great field position again. Here's Ball's Lama, batted down. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It was batted down at the line of scrimmage. Joe Hole got his hand up there. As Lommers tries to go off the left side, and it was just knocked down. <clears throat> yeah, and that's one of those where, you know, he was he was thrown off his back foot. He's got to step forward, drive forward, and, and that gap would have opened up to be able to complete that pass, but he'll learn. So excellent field position here for the Vikings. They got to take advantage of this. Here's Lommers. He's going to hand the ball off up the middle for a gain of about three yards. Some tough sledding there for number 21 for the Vikings, Mason Raider. As Mason Raider has came in to be the primary back right now for Hayden Heigl. Well, and I'm a little concerned about Heigl because he left holding his arm and his wrist, and we haven't seen him back now for uh, this would be the third series yeah. without him. So uh, it, it appears that it's something that uh, is going to keep him out of the game, at least for some period of time. And so Lipsick has to adjust. Next man up, you know. It's going to bring up third and eight from the 36-yard line. Clock continues to run. Allen East leads 14 to eight. Lommers is in the gun. He's got Raider to his left. 
He's got two receivers to the right. He's going to throw to the left side. He's got a man up the middle. He's going down the side. And a nice connection out there to number 19, Trent Seifker, as they connect again. And see, well, you couldn't have put that ball any better. The only one that could catch it was Trent Seifker. Well, and Seifker does a really nice job averaging 16 yards a carry, but he does a nice job here of not giving away where the football is until the last minute when he goes up and catches it. Just continues to run and then reaches out with his hands and pulls it in. Great throw, great catch. So that's going to put them in the red zone at the 15-yard line with 53 seconds to go as they try to tie this one up. Here comes Lommers in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right, one to the left, and a single setback. He's going to hand the ball off to Raider up the middle, and he gets a gain of about two yards, and that's going to keep that clock running. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they use some timeouts here. There's 40 seconds, and the clock is ticking. Here come the Vikings with 30 seconds to go here. Here's Lommers. He's going to roll off to his right. He's going to throw to the right. He's got a man out there, and they've got to – no, I thought he caught that, but he dropped it, and it hits the turf. And that was number six, Estevan Carrillo. Yeah, probably a good thing. Actually, he wasn't going to get a big gain there, yeah. and it stops the clock, allows – allows Lipsick to huddle up and sort of recollect their thoughts here for, for what I consider to be a pretty big play. It's third down and about eight. 28 seconds to go, third and eight from the 13-yard line. Lipsick tries to tie this one up, 28 seconds to go. And it, look, if you're Lipsick, get in the end zone or not, you've got to be happy with your performance, especially losing your top two offensive weapons. Well, and the challenge here is if you run the football to be able to get back to the line of scrimmage, if you don't get the first down, and make a play. Here's so. Lommers, he looks across the middle, he throws to the right, he's got his man out there. They're gonna have to hurry as they catch the ball and the clock continues to run. It's at 19-18 as they run to the line of scrimmage with no timeouts. Yeah, they've used all their timeouts in previous series. And Lommers looking across, and he, this is gonna be the last play of the game. Lommers is taking his time. He's gonna take the ball here. If they get it off at 3-2-1, this will be it. And here's Lommers. He scrambles. He's under heavy pressure. He's being chased by the Mustangs. He's going to grow the right gonna side. Go he's got a blocker out there, and he's going to not get in. He did not get in. So the Allen East Mustangs, Scott, what a stand-up job. Well, I thought he had a, a, a point in this run where he could choose to, to cut, it in. Cut, yeah. it, cut it inside, and he might have had a chance to run it in. And he chooses to go outside. He's not able to get in. Good and he had run a lead support. Blocker. Yeah, he had a lead blocker out there. And he just gets knocked out at the one-yard line. So that'll be the end of the first half. After one half here from Allen East High School, the Mustangs lead 14-8. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. So here we are, second half just about to get underway. And Scott, an eventful halftime here at Allen East. As we lost power the entire halftime and the band was on the field. Yeah, and the most impressive part about that is the band continued to they play. Did. <laughs> uh, and, and, and they sounded great. They did. And, and it was uh, quite an amazing thing. I've never experienced that. It was complete darkness. Every single light in the place went out. Apparently, uh, a lot of the homes in the area also, uh, we were told, lost power. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but uh, the band was undaunted, Did continued to play. We had a little extension, and now we're ready to go. So 14-8 to eight here as we start the third quarter, and really a tale of two quarters as Lipsick really dominated the first quarter, took their first possession down, put it in the end zone, get the two-point conversion, stalled a little bit the next few drives, and then the big incident where Hayden Heigl goes out of the game. Yeah, well, um, to be honest with you, I feel like Lipsick has outplayed Allen East yeah, I, yeah, exactly. in the first half. They, yeah. they had a couple drives stall very uh, deep in Allen East territory, you know, about the 10-yard line um, on fourth down. Uh, but, but they have controlled the football, possessed the football, and really dominated the first half, but uh, everywhere except for the scoreboard. And Hayden, or excuse me, and for Allen East, you take a look, and everything rested on the legs of Jacob Hersberg, who did a great job of getting the Mustangs back into the game. They get the lead, and then a terrific defensive stance at the end of the second quarter. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, he's done his thing for sure, and then Jack Hole has also done his thing. Right. And uh, Allen East has, has been timely with their plays, and they're up on the scoreboard. So Allen East will kick off to Lipsick to start the third quarter. 14-8 uh, from Allen East High School. Danny Hobart, Scott Nurse bringing you high school football here on WOSN. 
Yeah, and it's something I've never experienced all the years I've been doing <laughs> I this. I, I've never experienced, I mean, a complete and every, total blackout. Everything, everything, all noise, everything was gone. We were yeah. just sitting here in the dark. <laughs> yeah, instantly uh, a million phones came on, and it was like I, I thought I was at a concert or something, <laughs> right. you know. So the kick will go into the end zone. Lipsick will bring it out. That's impressive. That is very impressive. High school kid kicks it basically through the end zone. Strong kick there by the Mustang kicker. So as we said earlier in the broadcast, if Allen East gets the win tonight, they clinch his share of the Northwest Conference title. They'll go against Aiden next week with a chance to win it all themselves. Yeah, and let's give uh, Mike, Mike, well, that was not. I was going to say that's the Lipsick kicker. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm still in the dark, apparently. It's okay. It's, you know, right. it's okay. I'm still coming into the light. I'll Give me a second you. here. I'll guide you. I'll be your Sherpa up that mountain of success. <laughs> <laughs> here comes Lommers. He hands the ball off. Or, no, he keeps it himself. Tries to go around the left side, and that's sniffed out quickly by number three. That's Jacob Hershberger again. And he's everywhere, Scott. Yeah, <laughs> I, I thought that. I thought he handed it off I as did well. Too. It yeah. looked like he did and probably should have because uh, the ball carrier that we thought had the football gained about five or six yards. So that'll bring up second 11 as they lose a yard on the carry. Second 11 from the 19, 11.33 to go. Just want to give a shout out to the Allen East folks here tonight, the press box, the food has been unbelievable. The hospitality is second to none. They do a terrific job here. Yeah, and athletic director Alan King Jr. has been uh, has put together something pretty special. So Tyler Lommers with the throw tries to get to the ball to Jace Breck and an outstanding play. As let's see who that was on the defense there. That was Trey Hensley. We saw him do that in the end zone. Uh, just excellent defensive position, reaching out with that lead arm, inside arm, knocking the play down. It could have been a big play for Lipsick. Absolutely. Instead of an incomplete pass. And Jace Brecht had him beat on the slant pattern there. And uh, just a great job by Trey Hensley getting that off arm in there and pushing the ball away. Those so, guys have been going at it all night. So Lipsick's going to, or excuse me, on third down, throws across the middle. And they're going to call that a completion. No, they're going to call it incomplete. One official was calling it complete. The other official came in and waved it off. So that's going to bring up a fourth and 11. Yeah, Seifert thought he caught that football. I, I'd like to, you know, see. Hey, we're going to see that what, here, yeah. What we've got here on the replay, see if we can pick it up. But it looked to me like he got his hands under the football. But we'll see what happens here. Let's see that. Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah. Uh, the nose of the football hit the ground. He didn't quite get under it. Great job by our replay there. Our instant replay tonight is sponsored by Eastside Insurance. We provide you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. Eastside Insurance is our instant replay sponsor. So here comes Lipsick in the pump formation as Alan East gets the ball back. This will be their first possession of the second half. And that's Braylon Kennedy for... Oh, a nice high punt, and it's bobbled, and it's recovered by Lipsick. And that punt was so high in the air. And number eight for Allen East, Joe Hole bobbles the ball, and Lipsick gets a huge turnover at midfield. Yeah, that's number five, Caleb Ellibrock, a senior, 5'8", 162 pounds. Johnny on the spot here, as you can see, the football's bobbled, bounces off a shoulder pad, and right there is Caleb Ellibrock. And it hit the shoulder pad of Joe Hole, you're correct, and it just bounces off. And yeah, Caleb I, Ellibrock, Johnny on the spot. Hey, I tell you, today was so windy, uh, and the wind has died down some, but it's still blowing quite a bit, swirling quite a bit. I, I can't imagine trying to catch a punt in the night skies. There's Lomers, he hands the ball off, goes off the right side. It's number 21, Mason Raider, who got the bulk of the carry since Hayden Heigl was went out of the game. Him and Jimenez have done yeoman-like work back there, carrying the ball and later stages of the second or first half and in here to the first half. Yeah, and you see number, number three and Hershberger and number four there for Alanese Keaton Lehman in on the tackle. And you said it earlier, boy, this Alanese defense is quick to the ball and they, they get there in a hurry. Well, they do. They they play well as a unit. I really like that uh, each man has his responsibility, his job, and they do it well. I'll throw the ball to the left side. He just misses. That's number 19, Trent Siefker out there. And uh, 
Tyler Lommers kind of hurried that pass a little bit. He had his man, and he just didn't seem like he came out of his break on time, and the ball goes behind him a little bit. Yeah, I thought, uh, honestly, I thought Seifer was a little late coming out of the break, a little deeper than what Lommers right. had planned on, and uh, so it was just uh, kind of a miscommunication there, maybe, maybe lack of reps. Uh, with a new quarterback. With Tyler Lommers, yeah, right, good point. So that'll bring up third and eight from the 50-yard line. 14-8, Allen East continues to lead with 10-11 to go here in the third quarter. Lommers is in the gun. He's got Mason Raider off to his right. He's going to roll off to the left looking for receiver. He throws to the left side. He's got a man out there in double coverage, and that's going to be overshot. The intended target was number six, and that was Esteban Carrillo, who we've called his name quite a bit tonight. So that'll bring up fourth and eight from the 50-yard line. That'll bring on the punt team for Lipsy because they try to pin Allen East deep in their own territory. Well, interesting, uh, Coach Kirkendall told us before the game, one of the, the keys to the game is turnovers. We have to finish drives and not give the short field. And they've been, they've been the right. beneficiary of, of a turnover now and several short fields and just been unable to capitalize on them. So here's Jacob Hershberger back deep for the Mustangs, and we know how dangerous he is when he catches the football. There's the snap, punt is up, and it is a short punt off to the left side and it goes out of bounds and it rolls back into Allen East territory oh. and that's going to be a max value punt of about three yards. <laughs> yeah and they're just a great bounce for Allen East. That ball hovers along the sideline but doesn't go out and just uh, works its way back up to the 40, 48 yard yeah, line. Yeah I was going to say the line of scrimmage was the 50. The punt was farther than three yards but it came back. And uh, not, a, not a good look for Lipsick there. And Allen East has terrific field position as they'll start first and 10 from the 48-yard line with 9.54 to go here in the third quarter. Well, and that was the other uh, a key that Coach Kirkendall said, is special teams. They have a great athlete returning, and our coverage units need to be better. We need to work on that. And, and it sort of bites them a little bit there. Here comes Hershberger. He's going to keep the ball himself as he goes up the middle, and he's going to pick up about five yards. And I love that play when they let Jack Hole block for him, and he puts his hand on his back and just follows him right through the hole. Yeah, and, of course, Hershberger is so quick and athletic that he can then read and adjust to where the opening is, picks up a couple extra yards there. It's going to bring up second and four from the 46-yard line. 9.29 to go. Hershberger's in the gun. He's got Jack Hole to the right. He's going to hand the ball off the hole as he goes up the middle. He's going to get a guy about two yards. It's going to bring up third and about a yard, yard and a half. Jack Hole with the carry for the Mustangs. He's brought down by Seth Apple. Gain about two, makes it third and two. So the lights are back on. Power seems to be restored all over the, uh, the area. Let's see here. You get a good look there at the two guys that we talked about at the top. Jack Hole and Jacob Hershberger. There's Hershberger in the gun. He's got Hole to his left. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to follow that block and Hole again. And that's going to be close as he was knocked down. But did his forward progress get? Yes. And they're going to mark him a first down uh, across the marker there. Yeah, Isaiah Camarino met him in the hole. But I think he had already picked up the first down. Camarino drives him back. but his forward progress was enough to get the first down. So here come the Mustangs, 8.34 to go here. Bring up first and 10 from the 42-yard line. Hershberger throws off to his left. He's got a man out there. He's going to make the connection. That's number four, Keaton Lehman, as he goes up towards the first down marker, and that's going to be a gain of about seven yards. Well, we talked about Keaton Lehman. He averages 15.7 per catch, about 51 yards per game. You see a nice job here of catching the ball with his hands, tucking it away, and then picking up about seven yards. So 8.04 to go here, second and four from the 35-yard line. Danny Horwick, Scott Nurse from Allen East High School. They're on a mild fall night. It started out pretty blustery, but it's kind of calmed down a little bit. and Got some good weather here to work with. Here's Hershberger. He hands the ball to hole up the middle again, and he goes hard up the middle. He's going to get another first down, and he picks up about eight yards, and there's a flag that came in late. And we're going to see if that's a late hit or what that flag's all about. Yeah, I'm guessing that's a face mask call there a little bit at the end. I think you'll see a lipstick player. Nice job by Hole spinning there, and you see he grabs the yep. face mask on the tackle. There Good is call. the face mask. You're right. That's going to add 15 to the play. 
So. Really nice job of Jack Hole of feeling the pressure on the right side, spinning away from it, picking up about another five yards on that run after the contact was made by Lipsick defense. First and 10 from the 13. That'll put him in the red zone here. Here comes Hershberger. Hands the ball off the hole. He goes up the middle. Gets tough three or four yards there, and he does not go down easy. And He continues churning those yards and keeping those legs moving. You look at his legs, Scott, and they are just tree trunks. That young man is built to be a running back. Well, it's kind of interesting. Allen East has only had five fumbles on the year, which is a very low number. They're second in the Northwest Conference and they've only lost three of those, so they do a really good job of protecting the football, and hole is a big key to that. Here comes Hershberg. He's going to keep it himself, and he looks like he went to cut and slipped and fell, and we're going to go a gain of about maybe two yards. That will put him up to about the six-yard line. They'll bring up third down. Third and about five. Third and five from the eight-yard line. 6.47 to go here in the third quarter. Allen East leads 14-8. to eight. And we've got a timeout. Alan East is going to take a timeout. Timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. We're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Today's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance. We provide you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. Eastside Insurance is our instant replay sponsor. So here goes Alan East. Got another patented Alan East drive of just methodically bringing the ball down the field, running off tackle, and really inflicting pain on that Lipsy defense. Yeah, it's definitely a power drive. Uh, they've thrown a couple passes, but those passes have been kind of bubble screens or quick hit hitters for short yardage and runs from there. But uh, you're absolutely right. This is a powered, sustained drive down the field. This is Hershberg. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll to the right, looking for a man in the end zone. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to throw the ball out of the end zone, and a wise move there by that young man. That's going to bring up fourth down. So that's going to be decision time for Allen East. And a great job by the Lipstick defense of staying at home and keeping him contained. When he did get out of the pocket, they didn't allow him to move up towards the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I was watching the defensive backs. Really good job in coverage here. Hershberger had nowhere to throw and really did not have any space to take off running. I thought for a second there he might just take it, tuck it, and run. So and he did not. They're going to try a field goal here. They'll bring out Braylon Kennedy, the six foot, 140 pound senior, as he tries to tack on three points here. And we've seen his leg strength. That young man can boom the ball. So we'll see what he does here. And there's a gun, and he's going to back it up because there's going to be a false start on the Allen East offensive line. So they'll pick the flag up there, back them up to about the, let's see. Yeah, and honestly, I think this might be a more makeable field goal. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a little bit better angle. So it's about the 19-yard line, so it'll be a 29-yard field goal for Kennedy. Yeah, sometimes when you're tight on that hash mark. Kick is up, and it is good right through the uprights. That young man had plenty of leg to spare. Well, that's a mark of a good team. They always have a good kicking game to go with it. 17-8 here in the third quarter. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at wsntv.tv slash John Reed. So a great drive there for the Mustangs as they get three points. And what a, what a great comfort as a high school team to have a field goal kicker like the Mustangs have. Yeah, and that takes it to a two-score situation sure. now as they go up nine points. Um, the interesting thing is, 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 I think, is to see how Lipsick responds here. The last series, first series in, in this third quarter, they threw the ball on every play and, and were not successful in that. Um, and they've kind of abandoned the run a sure. little bit with Heigl being out. And uh, I, I feel like the drives that they have that were sustained were, were, were drives where they had a good balance. And we do not have a report on Hayden Heigel. The senior running back went to the locker room in the first half. He went down hard, and he comes up holding his wrist. So we're assuming it's a wrist or an arm injury of some type. Yeah, and another, uh, another kick through the end zone for Allen East. <laughs> Kennedy has got a really, really good leg. 
So 6.29 to go here. Allen East leads 17 to 8. 6.29 to go. Tyler Lommers is in the gun. He's flanked off to the right by Mason Raider. He's going to keep it himself, throw the ball out to Carrillo on the, left, or the right side. A shoestring catch there. Nice shot by Carrillo to pull that ball in. So Esteban Carrillo has been a lot of the game plan tonight as he has caught the ball, ran the ball a few times. And you're right, it was a shoestring catch there. As he goes out and gets a first down. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 30. Yeah, I feel like Lammers was trying to be careful there. His, his receiver That's was open. Point. He's trying to be very careful and get him the football instead of just throwing it to him. He wasn't throwing it. He was and, placing it. Uh, right. Yeah, you're right. right. We didn't see that in the first half. He right. had a little more confidence here. So here comes Lammers in the gun. He's got Raider off to his right. He's got one to the right, one to the left. He's going to pitch the ball back to Raider. Raider goes off tackle, picks up maybe two or three yards. Going to bring up second down and about seven. From the 33. Nice, nice job of absorbing the contact and continuing to move forward. So a huge game here tonight for the Mustangs. And next week, we've got one of the best that the entire state will be watching, and that's Coldwater Marion Local. And our crew will be there covering that game. So uh, just a fantastic uh, football game that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. So here comes Raider again. He is swollen up by that Mustang defensive line, and he gets nothing on that carry. That'll bring up third and six from the 34 if he got a yard. He just watch him move there. And what a great job by number 16 for the Mustangs. That's Cade Wireman as he gets in, sheds off a block, and meets him at the line of scrimmage. Well, I think right now through this game thus far that Allen East defensive line is winning the battle. Yes, I think you're right, absolutely. And, you know, we talked about that being a key to the game is the defensive line play to stop these outstanding running backs that we have. And uh, Allen East has risen to the challenge. So here's Lawrence. He throws across the middle and throws behind the intended target, which was number three, Jace Brecht. And uh, looks like he just missed him just by a hair there as he threw behind him. Yeah, Jace is a sophomore again, uh, you know, just uh, still still young in this game. Now, I, I, I really like your point. He does look a little tentative right now in his passing, and he did not. we didn't see that in the first half. Well, he needs some completions. I think that, you know, that builds confidence. It, it was also great defensive coverage by Carson Klum, though, good technique. So here's Allen East, or I'm sorry, Lipstick is in pump formation. Jacob Hershberger is back deep for the Mustangs. There's a low liner that's going to bounce at about the 45 and it'll roll to the 40 to the 39. And that's where Jacob Hershberger and the Mustangs will take over. 4.17 to go here. Allen East leads 17 to 8, trying to win a Northwest Conference title, at least tie for the Northwest Conference title, as we said that earlier. If they win tonight and get a win against Aiden next week. They will be the sole recipients of that trophy, which I'm sure that's exactly what they want. I don't well, want to share my titles with anybody, right? Right. Well, they currently stand number two in Region 24, Division 6. So, um, you know, they're in a good spot. Absolutely. So here comes Jacob Hershberger in the Mustangs. 4.17 nope. to go. Allen East prop most likely will host the first two rounds of he the playoffs. The ball to hole, and hole was met in the hole by the defensive line. Scott, what's your thought on the new 16-team format? Everybody's got an opinion. I, I have not expressed mine, but most of the inner circle that I hang out with knows how I feel about it. What, what say you? Yeah, yeah that, that's a tough call. You know, you, you, you like to see more teams have the opportunity. Sure. But, but at the same time, I think it uh, takes a little luster off the first round or two of the playoffs because it seems like, you know, you, you've got teams with losing records sure. making the playoffs, which yeah. is something that never happened in the past. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that 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 changes things. Yeah. And there, Jacob Hersberger tries to throw the ball off to the left side, undershoots the receiver. Intended receiver was Keaton Lehman. My whole thing, Scott, is, you know, well, last year with the first year they started it, we saw a lot of 65 to 7 opening rounds and 70 to right. 7 and, and just blowouts. And I, I, my concern is, are we going to get kids hurt? And, I, you know, I don't want to be Pollyanna about it, but goodness gracious, in a 70 to 7 game or things like that, those kind of things happen. 
Yeah, but you know, you see that in basketball as sure. well. You know, every team has the opportunity to, to play in the tournament, the postseason in basketball. That's a great point. Yep. A lot of times in the first rounds, you get that, you know, 70 to 30 score and, and those kind of blowouts. But I mean, and that, that's, that's, that's part of what it is. Sure. You know, when a 16 seed plays a one seed, uh, they're a one seed for a reason. Right. Um, and, and, and that's what you're going to get. So, um, you know, there's, there, I, I can see both sides of it for sure. Sure. So we'll bring up fourth down, Allen East in punt formation as the Lipsick defense stiffens up there and holds in a fantastic punt by the Allen East punter. That ball is going to roll into the end zone. Good decision. But boy, Jacob Hershberger got all of that one. <laughs> he's well, everywhere. Yeah, you can see why he's uh, <laughs> leads the Northwest Conference in punting. <laughs> he, he didn't even look like he tried on that. No. I mean, it was just a casual kick and boom, into the end zone. 2.50 to go here in the third quarter. Allen East continues to lead 17 to 8. Lipsick shows a little life on defense here, and now they've got to move that ball down the field and get it, get some points of some type. Yeah, and, you know, we talked about playoffs a little bit, and when you talk about teams that have success and good successful runs in the playoffs, they have all the pieces. Sure. Oh, and, and yes. And I think Allen East, you know, they have a kicker who can kick off into the end zone. They have a kicker who can kick field goals. They have a punter that is going to get you 40-plus yards a punt. They have all the pieces that are necessary to go deep. Well, there's Tyler Lommers goes down the field, and he's got a connection. He finds Trent Seifker on the left side. Speaking and, of going deep. Yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> right. Trent Seifker gets behind the secondary, and they've got something cooking now. And you watch here. That, this is, look, look, Scott, this is the best ball he's thrown tonight. Well, that's a yeah. new quarterback. That's Tommy Offenbaker, number seven for Lipsick, who so, threw that football. So they made a change there and immediately test him. Absolutely. So Tommy Offenbaker comes in, and he had played some before Lommers had played. They decided to go with Lommers tonight, but Offenbaker gets the call to the bullpen, and here come the Vikings. Offenbaker hands the ball off to number 21, Mason Raider, as they continue using Raider in that Mason tailback Raider's position. Ball, well, and I saw Offenbaker warming up uh, during the last series when Lipsick had the ball on the sidelines, and I thought, well, I wonder why he's warming up, yeah. and, and now it's evident. And I, and I think, you know, this is where Kirkendall is looking for some sort of spark, yeah. you know, some, something to get this offense started and get him going again. A big loss with Hayden Heigl going out. They need somebody else to come in and spark him a little bit. Well, so. it's, 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 it's unbelievable to me, and it's just a testament to the coaching of, of Lipsick's coaching staff that they've lost their two top offensive players, and now they're on the third-string quarterback, and here they're playing with the best team in the Northwest Conference. And there's almost a connection there as number six, and that is Estevan Carrillo gets turned around and almost makes the catch. Yeah, dangerous pass out there against that Allen East defense. When you look at their, their defense for, uh, for Allen East, they are uh, excellent against uh, the pass. They average, they've got 15 interceptions on the year. They're second. They actually tied for first in the conference. And so throwing that football up there is a little dangerous. So third and four from the 41-yard line, 138 to go. Lipsick's trying to get back in this game down 17 to eight. And they brought in Tommy Offenbaker as the new quarterback. It's a big play. This is Offenbaker. He's going to throw to the left side. And, oh, his man was hit. Yeah. And he, I, I knew exactly what was going to happen because the defensive back met him early. Yeah, he uh, just said, uh, you know, we've seen that. Allen East really good at timing things up there. And they, just a little early on that play, they're going to get the P.I. call. Two flags on the field. You can see it here yes. right before yeah. the ball is there. Yep, and that's number seven on the defense, Carson Klum. Haunted house up here in the uh, press box. Not real sure what that was. Yeah. Nobody else heard it? It might be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Might be generators reconnecting up here, but we're getting a little noise. But 133 to go. Allen needs to head 17 to 8. Lipsy's on the run here. A nice possession for them. You got the 26 yard line, first down. Offenbaker hands the ball off to Raider, and they're going to stop play there. So false start. A false start from the Lipsick offensive line. I think it's the referee's mic that's causing the 
could be, yeah. Yeah, it, it may, something may have happened during the blackout, but when, whenever the referee is making a call and flips on his mic, we're getting a whole lot of interference up here. Yeah, sounds like a something from a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for, that'll be, make it first and 15 from the 31-yard line. Tommy Offenberger is in the gun. He's got Mason Raider to his left. He's got a man in the slot. He's got, a, he's got Trent Seifer to the far right. He's got a single receiver to the left. He'll hand the ball to Raider. Raider goes up the middle. Gets a gain of about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Going to bring up second and about 14 to 13. So the, the one thing about Lipsick, Scott, is they do not abandon the run. They're on their third tailback tonight, and they have not abandoned the run. Well, and I think that's what uh, the last couple series, they threw the ball in every play and were not successful. Sure. They were quick three and out, three and out. And I think uh, this, this drive has had a nice mix. They've gone back to what worked, what we saw work in the first half is that good mix of pass and run. Second and about uh, 11 from the 32. This is Offenbaker. He's got Carrillo off to his right. He's going to keep it himself. He looks down to the end zone. He throws deep left side, and that's going to be picked off by Jacob Hershberger. And he played center field on that one, and he spotted that and comes out of nowhere and picks it up, and he's taken down at about the 19-yard line. Well, you know, when you're going deep, one of the key things, you've got to step up and step into your throw. And we see Offenbaker kind of throw off his back foot. And that Had ball, a lot of air under it. That yeah. ball hung up there forever. You can see here, and his arm was hit sort of as he throws, and it just hung up there. And that's all Hershberger needed was a little time to get there. And he makes the play. Again, another interception for Allen East. Hershberger was taken down hard as he was tackled by the helmet. Could have been another horse collar. Could have been. Could have been. Just getting my words right there. You, you got him right it's this right, time. That's right. Right. <laughs> the horse tackle collar. Right. Jacob Hershberger and the Mustangs will take over at the 20. Hershberger is going to keep it himself, go up the middle for a gain of about two yards. And now you're looking at the clock. It's going to end this quarter here. And the Lipstick's being limited on possessions because Allen East can grind out the clock here. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I'm not sure they're going to run another play here. They're just going to go ahead and head to the sidelines and call it a quarter. Yep. So after three quarters from Allen East High School, the Allen East Mustangs continue to lead 17 to 8. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale's Concrete is our scoreboard sponsor. So we'll start the fourth quarter from Allen East, and they are one quarter away, Scott, from tying a Northwest Conference championship. And the folks in the stands know it as they're getting pretty excited here. And we've got the little cheerleaders out here, and uh, there's a check presentation they're doing. So lots of big things happen here at Allen East. Yeah, it looks like a check for about $9,000. but uh, That's it, what you make per game, it, isn't it? it? It's, yeah. a, it's a giant check. I'm not sure <laughs> that would fit in my wallet. but Congratulations, cheerleaders. Um, but, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. So uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's fourth quarter. This is the time where, you know, if you're out in the East, you want to grind it out. Yeah, your offensive you, line needs to take over. Yeah, and, and, and you've got the horse to do it with Jack Hole. You've got Hershberger back there. You've got the offensive line. You want to grind it out and use the clock. So Hershberger hands the ball to Hole as he goes off tackle, takes a hit, and scoots up for about a five- or six-yard gain. And that will bring up third and really small, maybe a yard, maybe two, from about the 30-yard line. Yeah, they're oh, going to go ahead and move the wow. chains. It was close. It was really close. They uh, they opted to uh, give it, give him the first down. So you, I think you're you're right, Scott. That's a great call. You're going to see a steady diet of uh, of Jack Hole and Jacob Hersberger keeping the ball themselves. So he's got Hersberger in the gun. He's got Hole off to the right. Hershberger's going to hand the ball to Hole as he goes off tackle and picks up a tough three or four yards there, and that keeps the clock running. Now, and he's continues leading 17 to 8 with 11.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and you're up two scores, so, you know, it, it, it's if you can just maintain ball control and eat up the clock, run it down, and, and eventually uh, make this drive matriculate to the end zone, then uh, that would be the ideal situation. So here's Hershberger in the gun. He's got Hole off to his left. 
He's going to hand the ball to Hole again as he breaks through the middle. And there he goes across the 45 to the 50. He's at the 45. He's got a man to beat. And he takes down at the 40-yard line. Jack Hole, another tough, tough yard. Yeah, and Jack Hole is really good at that spin move kind of upon contact. He uses the contact to propel him into a spin. You're going to see towards the end of this run here, he picks up about seven yards after, boom, right there. He spins, gets about seven more after that. He, he's really good at that. And don't forget after the game to check out our highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. As Scott Nurse and I will be picking a candidate for the Stolly Hustle Award, and uh, I've got a pretty good idea who I uh, who I like so far. So We'll see what happens at the end of this game here. 10.33 to go. Mustangs lead 17 to 8. Hershberger looks over at the sideline. And I got a feeling, and, and Hershberger is a senior quarterback. He's going to watch that play clock, and they're not going to snap that ball until it's way down to 5, 4, 3, maybe 2 uh, at the most, and uh, just take that time off the clock. And as I say that, he snaps it at 13 seconds. So what do I know? That'll bring up third and 11. 9.59 to go. Allen East would win tonight. They'd move to 8-1 and one and 6-0, and oh, unblemished in the NWC. Lipsy could fall to 3-6 and 2-4, and, and, and that would put a real damper on their playoff hopes. Here's Hershberger again, goes up the middle, steps back and goes straight up the middle for a gain of about nine yards and almost pulls off the first down there. That's going to bring up about fourth and two. Yeah, Lipsick brings Isaiah Camarino in on a uh, linebacker Blitz, basically, and Hershberger makes him pay. He Does a little sidestep, yeah. recognize it right away, and took off. So here comes Hershberger and the Mustangs as they're going for it on fourth and two from the 30-yard line. Basically trying to seal this game away here. Hershberger's in the gun. He's got Jack Hole off to his left. He's going to keep it himself and follow the lead block a hole, and it is going to be really close. The Island East Mustangs say they got the first, but Lipsick's saying, no, wait a minute. We'll probably get a measurement out here. We'll see what they say. Yeah, based on where the officials are lined up, it looks really close. I think they're going to mark him just short. I think you're right. And they are. They are saying that Lipsick held and a huge stand by the Lipsick Vikings. And Coach Joel Billings is coming out on the field, and he's saying to the officials, hey, look, it's it, he comes out here, and he's, he's visibly upset. And they needed to get Scott to the 20 to the 28 yard line, right? I believe so. Or to, excuse me, to the yeah the 28 yard line they needed to get there, and it looks like he just fell short of it. Yeah, it's, it uh, seemed to be a little confusion there on the play call and everything, but uh, nevertheless, Lipsick holds. They have an opportunity here. So here comes Offenbaker, and they're going to stop play again. There's a flag on the play. And that's going to be a false start on the Lipsick offense. Yeah, they called it uh, the officials pointing there. Somebody on the left side of the offensive line moved. And I think you're right on the uh, mic of the officials. I think that's what's causing all the disturbance here. Yeah, and they, uh, I think somebody got to him during the last break and, and uh, you know, got rid of those because we haven't sure. had that issue anymore. So here comes Offenbaker in the gun. He's got trips to the left. He's going to swing the ball back out to Raider. Raider's going to cut through the line. Going to have a nice pickup of about eight to nine yards. And that's going to put it past the line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up second and about seven. Yeah, I thought he had a little space here to the outside as you get a look at this, but he cuts it back towards the middle of the field and, and does a uh, – Picks up a nice gain here. Raiders quick. He, yes. he really is quick in the hole, and he moves his feet really nice. There's a lot of athletes on this Lipsick team. Well, there, yeah, there's a lot of athletes on this field, both sides. Absolutely. Often Baker's in the gun. He's got Raider off to his left. He's going to go back. He looks across the field, and he throws off to the left side. And he guns it out there for number three, Jace Brecht. And they're going to say that the ball hit the, dirt, hit the turf. Excuse me. 
Again, an, a nice effort by Jace to get down and try to make that catch, get his hands under the football. But you can see here, wow. it looked to me like I he, he might have. I thought he caught it. Yeah, we might need to send that up to the uh, review booth. Yeah, I was going to say, can we take another look at that guy? Yeah. That was clearly a catch. I, I don't know how. Unless I'm missing something, well, but that was the, clearly if the, the catch. Uh, if the nose of the football would hit the ground at the same time he caught it, then wow. perhaps that's that's the call. So here comes Lipsick, third and seven. They try to convert to a first down. Offenbaker looks across the field. He steps up in the pocket. He's going to keep it himself, and he is taken down by number four, Keaton Lehman, who does a saving tackle. Otherwise, Offenbaker had a lot of green in front of him. Well, and he had a lot of time back there. Yes, he, he really did. did. A good job by the offensive line to give him time to – to look at the receivers, and that's uh, number 13. That's actually Lammers, uh, Ty Lammers was back in the game. And uh, he had plenty of time back there, but nobody was open. So they have switched quarterbacks again on us, Scott. Tyler Lammers and Offenbaker, and, and still no Hayden Heigl, uh, who went out in the first half with an injury. So fourth and five from the 35, and uh, they're going to go for it here. And, boy, if they don't get this, that's going to set the Mustangs up in prime position. So here's Lommers. He looks across the field. He throws to his receiver, and he's got him out there for a first down. And he gets an additional 10 yards. Number three, Jay Sprecht with a nice catch, and he gets some yards after the catch. Well, he's a sophomore. He's six foot one, pretty good sized kid, and, and uh, does a nice job of catching with his hands again, not, not catching with his arms or his shoulder pads and then makes a little run after the play. I like him. I think he's good. He, I think he has a potential to be – Something really yeah, special. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Scott, Tyler Lommers looks confident now, yeah. and he's throwing the ball like he did in the first half. Well, and I think that's just what you need to do is you, a couple completions build that confidence. Yeah, and here's Mason Raider. He gets the pitch in the backfield. He goes across the line of scrimmage, picks up about two. It's going to bring up second and eight from the 42. Well, as the clock continues to roll here, I think this is a must score. Absolutely. For yeah. They have to score points on this possession. So 6.26 to go. <clears throat> and the Dales concrete scoreboard. Allen East leads 17 to 8. Danny Holbrook and Scott Nurse from Allen East High School. On a wonderful fall night here, week eight of the high school football season. Here's Lommers, goes across the middle, and that ball was batted down. It was batted down by the linebacker back there, number 16, Cade Wireman. We've called him a lot on some big plays tonight. Yeah, he does a nice job of, of seeing the football and then just getting a hand up, knocking it down. That's going to bring up third and 10 from the 44. 6.07 to play. Lipsick still has all three timeouts. Allen East has two, and I think they learned a little bit from the first half. They, they got rid of all those timeouts and had to hurry at the end of the half, and now they've not used any. So let's see what they do here. Here comes Lommers. He's got Mason Raider in the backfield with him. He's going to roll to his left, looks across the left side, and he overshoots the receiver. The intended target was number 19, Trent Seifer. Yeah, and that's a hard hard pass to throw. That's one he he, he and that every quarterback yeah. has to work on. When you're going to your left as a right-handed quarterback, you really have to focus on, on, on turning those hips, squaring the shoulders, and making that throw. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's hard to put it exactly where it needs to be. So another big fourth down here, fourth and eight from the 44 with 6.02 to go. Let's see if Lipsy can convert here and continue this drive as they so desperately need to put points on the board, down 17-8 to eight to the Mustangs. Yeah, this is the second fourth down they're going for it. I think Kirkendall recognizes yes. also this is a must-score possession. So Lommers is in the gun. He's got two to the left. He's got a single set back, and we've got a flag. And let's see what I this I think it is, is uh, at too much time. I think the play clock delay elapsed. Game. Yep, so delay of game. Delay of game, yeah, you're right. Good call. So not what they needed when it was fourth and eight, and now you're looking at fourth and 13 from the 49-yard line. Yeah, I think Coach is uh, trying to decide here, should he punt this? and. And, and try to pin Allen East deep, or, right, or do you, two you scores, go for yeah. it? You're, you're down two scores. I think you got to go for it. Yeah. Seifker brings the play in from the sidelines. Here I'd, comes Lommers. I'd look for Seifker. He, he's your he's your big receiver. 
Wallner steps up in the pocket. He throws long down the left side. He's got Seifker out there, but it's picked off by number seven, Carson Klum, and he brings it up the right side. Here comes Klum for the Mustangs, and he runs out of bounds at about the 48-yard line, and there is a late hit on the sidelines, and that, my friends, is probably going to tack on another 15 yards. Yeah, and I think uh, I, I actually think this was a pretty well-thrown ball. I don't think uh, Seifker located the football, was running a little bit of an inside pattern there, and had he continued straight downfield, if he had – Caught vision of the football earlier. I think he could have made a play or a catch on this. We did not see the hit there. No. The officials are discussing it. It, it looks to me like it uh, might be. There's another flag that's also down at the 32-yard line. Okay, I did not see that one. You and, were um, And um, the way Allen East is backed up, their offensive unit, I think it's against Allen East. So this football is probably going to be brought back. Two five. Okay, two blocks in the back. They were both after the interception. So it'll be so. from the spot of the foul. Yep. Okay, so that's going to push Alanis way back. So they'll decline the one at midfield and take the one at the 32, and uh, we should end up somewhere around the 17-yard line. So really, Scott, what we got here is what you had said. Are we going to punt or go for it? And, and it's, in essence, it is like a punt. But time is not on their side. Right. 549, though, you do have enough time sure. with three timeouts. If you, if you get a, if you can hold them here and get the football back, you have a chance. So first and 10 from the 22. Hershberger's in the gun. He's got Hole to his right. He's got two receivers to the left, one to the right. He's going to hand the ball to Hole up the middle as he pounds through that line and picks up about three yards. Going to bring up second and seven from the 25. The clock continues to run. And you're right, you wonder when they're going to take those timeouts. And, you know, just with 5.30 to go here, this is almost a make or break drive. Yeah, and I think it, it, it's an interesting dilemma because do you take them on defense and hope that your defense right. can hold, or do you wait and use them on offense? I, I, I feel like when you're on offense, you have a little more control. You can, you know. You can get to the sidelines. You can yeah. get to the sidelines. You can throw an incomplete pass. You throw it away or whatever to preserve time. But. Uh, oh, and, and the ball was on the turf. Hole fumbled the ball. And let's see who got it. But they never made the connection. Hershberger to Hole. And the ball's picked up by Lipsy. Are they saying that Lipsy got the ball? Nobody's made a call. Yeah. yeah. Finally, the official steps in and points it. Uh, it's going to remain out on the east. We'll see this on replay because the Lipsick player came out of the pile with the ball, but they're saying Allen East retains possession, and there was never a connection there. And maybe they're saying that Hole had possession of it in the you know in the pile. Yeah, I think he had he had regained possession. He's down. Yes. And then a Lipsick player reaches in and pulls it away. So that'll bring up third and six from the 27. Hershberger's in the gun. He's going to keep it himself, go off the left side, tries to get around the end, and he does, and he breaks containment, and he gets a first down. And now with 4.13 to go, Allen East has a fresh set of downs up 17-8. to eight. Well, and that's what I was talking about earlier. If you use those timeouts on defense and then you don't hold them, yeah, you're, you're done. Then, then you're done. <laughs> yeah. So uh, good job by Coach Kirkendall to preserve those timeouts, hopefully hoping to get a stop here and get the football back. Now the clock is under four minutes. They're going to run that play clock down. Hershberger's in the gun. He's got hole off to his right. He's got trips to the right and a single receiver to his left. Hershberger's going to hand the ball to hole. He goes off the left side. And he fumbles the ball again. And let's see who got it this time. And Lipsy yep. does retain possession. So a huge, huge turnover with 3.38 to go. And that's the second time they've had problems tonight with that connection. Actually, Hole just fumbles the ball there. Yeah, it's twice in a row fighting for extra yardage there. And clearly, Lipsick recovers. So Lipsick making one that last valiant effort here to try to get back in this game with 3.38 to go. Alanis continues to lead 17 to eight. Yeah, and that was number seven, Tommy Offenbaker on the fumble recovery. Basically a pretty clean game tonight when you think about it. In the last couple of possessions, we've had some interceptions and fumbles. And so this is Lammers. 
He's looking down deep. He goes to the right side. He's got a man out there and almost picked off by Jacob Hershberger as he was playing center field and he went over to make the play. Yeah, I think I would try to throw away from him. So that'll bring up second and 10 from the 47. 3.33 yeah. to go. I really like Hershberger back there in just center field, just complete freedom um, because he makes plays. I mean, he makes he plays. Does. He's got an interception. He, he, he's made several tackles from deep safety. There's Lommers, rolls off to his left. He's got Carrillo out there. They make the connection, but Carrillo is hit hard by number 13, Bryce Avery. Johnny on the spot. And that's how you make a tackle on a pass play. Well, and then he gives the old safe sign, you know, the uh, sure. arms extended there, happy uh, to make the play. But, yeah, you're right. Just a great job on closing and coverage and safe. That's how the kids do it now, Scott. That's how they all do it. <laughs> they see it on TV that's on right. Saturday and Sundays. They see it in the Big Ten, the Pac-12, the <laughs> ACC. Here comes Raiders. He goes off the right side. He breaks tackle. He gets up in the, up past the secondary and a nice gain of about 17 yards. And the Vikings are right back in business. It's a first down. It's going to bring the ball to the 28-yard line. That'll bring first and 10 from the 28. 249 to go. I'll tell you what. You put it in the end zone here, and you've got all three timeouts left, and you got a shot. Yeah, he he makes three nice cuts in this one run, and. Uh, is able to get the first down. So here comes Lommers in the gun. He's got Raider to his right. Lommers is going to roll right. He's looking down the field. He throws it. He's got his man out there. He's got Trent Seifker. And they'll move the ball up to about the 13-yard line. Yeah, really nice pattern there by Seifker as he goes about 10 yards, stops, and comes straight back to the football. He gets up a little woozy there. I was going to say, did you see that? I saw that. He, he did wake up a little woozy there. And wow. That yeah, was a helmet-to-helmet th -helmet hit there. Well, uh, yeah, I think it uh, looked to me like number eight, Joe, Joe Hole, came in and laid the wood to him. Yeah, so we got an injury timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 2.25 to go. We're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale's Concrete is our scoreboard sponsor. So here we come back to action. Lipsick has the ball from the 16-yard line. Here's Lommers rolling off to his left. He throws the ball deep into the end zone, and it's picked off again. Jacob Hershberger picks it off and brings it up the sideline, steps out of bounds with 2.14 to go, trying to seal a win for his Mustangs. Well, once again, he does what he does, and uh, he's pretty good at it. Well. <laughs> and it's his sixth interception of the year, and you see Lommers puts it only place he could. He does have a receiver out there, but Hershberger just uses his body, shields the rest of the guys off, and picks it. He's just such a good athlete. I, I, he takes away half the field. Well, he's put together well. <laughs> yeah. He's He's not uh, – um, you know, obviously he spends a lot of time conditioning and working out because he, he's put together right. And they're going to take their time now again. So here's Hershberger in the gun with 2.14 to go. First and 10 from the 18-yard line. Hershberger hands the ball off the hole and he goes straight up the middle. And I got to imagine you're going to get a steady diet of that, forcing Lipsick to take all three of those timeouts. Well, and, and Jack Hole wants to redeem himself because he fumbled twice on last series. And, um, and, and, you know, and really changed the complexion of this game. It gave Lipsick life. And so he wants to take it back out of, you know, he wants to run the football, I'm sure, and, and make up for that. So 144 to go, and the clock continues to run. Mustangs have the ball, second and seven from the 21. This is Hershberger in the gun. Hole goes off to the right side. He'll go up to the ball and grab it again, go up to the middle, and just pick up some hard yardage, and he just keeps turning them out. 126 to go, and the clock continues to run. Yeah, Lipsick's going to use that first timeout. When again, first uh, you know, we talk about. Oh, no, this, I'm sorry, timeout, or the first down, stop the clock for a second there. Yeah, we talk about this, uh, you know, Al Nee's team 
potentially clinching the uh, Northwest Conference and their playoff hopes. And I, th I think, you know, I talked about it a little bit before, but they, they have all the pieces to, you know, we they talked do. about the kickers, we talked about the punter, we talked about special teams and kickoffs. But, you know, they've got a quarterback who's a dual threat, legit. They've got good receivers. They've got a running back, Jack Hole, who can do, do the work, as we see here. They've got an offensive and defensive line. The defensive line has risen to the occasion tonight. So th they really have a good balance. They have all the pieces. I, I, I look for them to make I, a little bit of yeah, a run this I, year. I, I think this is a, a year that it's gonna be a special year. That, that yeah. they can do something if they continue to play at this level. You're right. And when you get into tournament time and the weather gets bad, you have to have what you just said. You have to have that rushing attack. You have to have all those pieces, and they do. Right. So Allen. Well, and you face such diverse teams. Oh yeah, absolutely. You, you face teams that just run the football. You face teams that throw the football, and they've got defensive players that can play both. So that's going to do it. The last play of the game, the Allen East Mustangs. They have clinched a share of the Northwest Conference title. They win this one 17-8. We come back. We'll have our Stolly Hustle Award winner. We'll get down to the field talk to Coach Joel Billings. Back here at Allen East High School with head coach Joel Billings. Coach, a share of the Northwest Conference Championship, you got to be ecstatic for your kids and your community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we got kids that work hard. Uh, they're very consistent. Um, you know, they come and show up to work every day, and they, they deserve it. It's awesome to see. It looked like Lipsy gave you I mean, a really good battle tonight, oh, and, and they lost a few key players, but your kids continued to battle and didn't lose focus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lipsick is a really well-coached team. Their kids are disciplined. Um, you know, they continued to fight. They didn't give up, and that's what we expected from them. And before I let you go, I want to ask you about our, our Hustle Award winner tonight, Jacob Hershberger. The young man does it all both sides yeah. of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you said it, he does it all on both sides of the ball. Uh, made some huge plays. Um, stepped up with, I mean, the turnovers and stuff were huge in the, tonight. So you go after Aiden next week and try to win it all. You, you got to be a little selfish. You want it by yourself, right? Absolutely, yeah, we don't want to share it. So. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. All right, we're going to bring in Scott Nurse and Jacob Hershberger, our Stolly Hustle Insurance winner. And you can check out the Stolly Hustle Award winner on our YouTube page, WOSN. Jacob, congratulations on the Northwest Conference Championship. Thank you. <laughs> you did a great job tonight, and you did it on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and you got a great defense. We came up, made some plays on both sides of the ball. Feels great. Yeah, and, and Scott Nurse was talking a little bit about uh, your prowess there on defense. You play a little center field there, and you find those balls in the air. Yeah, you know, it's all set up for it to funnel the the middle and you know I'm just there to clean everything up I'm kind of like a deep deep player I just cover everything deep and <laughs> made some plays tonight yeah. I, I I just like what you do offensively from the quarterback spot running the football uh, throwing the football defensively you got two picks tonight you scored a touchdown it's a pretty good night you know you gotta yeah. feel pretty good yeah I know it feels great we're offensive line stepped up man they made a few, bunch of few holes for me and I just ran through them you know you got to give them credit Jack Cole came in and finished the game. You know, he's a tank, really hard to bring down. Yeah. It's great to have a guy like that. I like how you give your teammates credit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's no. that's part of why you're our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. Now I talked to Coach Billings and uh, asked him the same question I'm going to ask you. I want you to be a little selfish. You want the conference championship all to yourself. Oh, right? yeah. We're not sharing that. You know, this school has been a while, and, you know, especially for us, it's going to feel great. we got 14 seniors. You know, we've been working for this our entire life, and we're not going out without it. But especially for this community, it's been, I don't even know, like, 40 years or something since we won outright and it's we're going in next week with everything we got I mean yeah well congratulations Jacob Hershberger our Stolly Hustle Award winner so Scott we'll wrap it up here and we take a look at the Mustangs and you're right you said it earlier this team's built for a long tournament run yeah I'm looking forward to you guys I think you're going to be all right and yeah. uh and we appreciate you joining our wrap up too you know absolutely you do it all tonight that'll wrap it up here from Allen East is the Mustangs get a share of the Northwest Conference title, and they go for it all next week right here on WOSN.